Hey guys, in this video, the brilliant Mr. B is going to be taking you through expanding single brackets. Now this is a skill that comes up a lot, not just in algebra, but can be used in other things which incorporate algebra. Now there are 15 examples here, work through at a nice pace. If you want to go a bit faster, you can jump ahead to the video, or you can pause the video, try and work out the answer, and then just check your working. There are lots and lots more practice questions waiting for you over my website. going to take a look at expanding brackets so what we'll do first is look at the first question in a lot of detail and see what expanding brackets actually means and then once we've done that we'll try and look at shortcuts that'll speed up the process for any future questions so we're going to start off with expanding and then we have a five and then after the brackets we have an x plus four and then we are closing the brackets so what does this mean well this means that the bracket we have the x plus 4, we have five sets of it because we have a 5 at the start. So we have a second set and our and our fourth and our fifth set. So rather than writing the expression in the brackets five times, we just put a little 5 at the start to tell us how many we've got. Now again, what does this mean? Well, if we add all this up, x plus x plus x plus x plus x, is 5x and then 4 plus 4 plus 4 plus 4 plus 4. Now we could just do 4 plus 4 is 8, 8 plus 4 is 12, 12 plus 4 is 16 and 16 plus 4 is 20. It's quite a lot of adding up and we find out that the expression 5 bracket x plus 4 close a bracket is exactly the same as 5 lots of x and a 20. But a faster way of doing it is just to notice we've got five fours and five multiplied by four is 20. So we can show that with a little arrow, five times four is going to give us the 20. And then we can do the same thing with the X's. We could just add up all the five X's, but X multiplied by five, if you think about how algebra works, X times five is going to give us five X we can just multiply the number on the outside of the bracket by the two numbers on the inside of the bracket to get the answer. So let's try this with question two. We have a seven, and then in the brackets, we have x plus six. So rather than writing x plus six eight, seven times, we're just going to go, well, I'm going to multiply the seven by the x, and seven multiplied by x is seven x. And then we're going to go, I'm also going to multiply the seven by the six and seven times six is 42. So both things inside the bracket are being multiplied by the number outside of the bracket. A common mistake here is to only multiply the first number and get the green answer that we have there. And then rather than writing plus 42 in pink, they might write plus six and forget to multiply the second number. So it's very important that you do multiply both. So moving on to question three same process take the number at the front the eight and multiply it by both of the numbers in the brackets we'll multiply the eight by the three which will give us 24 and we're going to multiply the eight by the x and that will give us eight x's now one little change here is that the numbers in the brackets are the other way around and we have the number first and then the algebra letter second and that's the opposite to the first two questions. Now you'll notice I haven't written my answer the other way around. I could have written 24 plus 8x and written it the same way around that it is in the brackets. Now, actually, it doesn't matter which way around you write it. It's not going to make a difference. You're going to get the same amount of marks. So don't worry how it's written. Either one will do. But what you will see on mark schemes for exams and from answers from teachers is that they will tend to put the algebra first. So they'll write the x term first and then the number term, the integer term last. So again, it doesn't matter which way around you write it, but just be aware of the way it'll be written on exams. And if you do write it the other way around, you're not going to get it wrong. Moving on to question four, you will see a change. There's a takeaway sign in there. And a lot of students think, well, it's got a takeaway. It'll be a different method. And they start to get a little bit confused, but it's exactly the same method. All you do is you're going to multiply the five by the X as we did before. 
which will give us 5x. And then we multiply the 5 by the 7, which will give us 35. Now, all that changes here is the sign. So looking at the signs, in all the first questions, we had a plus in the middle, and so we had a plus in our answer. So for this question, we've got a takeaway in the middle, so we'll have a takeaway in the answer. So that's a nice, simple way of doing it. Uh, more accurately, what's happening is we have a positive 5 multiplied by a negative 7. So a positive times a negative will give you a negative. Now looking at question 5, again the same method. 8 times the first number in the brackets, the x, will give us 8x. And then 8 times the second number in the brackets will give us 48. 8 times 6 is 48. And then there's a takeaway in the brackets, so our answer is going to have a takeaway in the middle. And that's not always true. If we had a negative number at the start, then a negative and negative would be positive. That's something to look out for for harder questions. But for now, just copying the same symbol is going to work for us. Moving on to the medium questions, you'll now see that we have an X. We have a letter on the outside of the brackets. But actually, this doesn't change the method we're going to be using. What this does do is because X is an unknown number, we don't know how many sets of those brackets we have. So we can't actually write it out a long way, but we can use our shortcut and do the multiplications. So our first question is x with an x minus 4 in brackets. So same method, multiply the outside number by the first number in the bracket. x multiplied by x would be x squared. Squared just meaning you multiply it by itself. We can't get a numerical value here because we don't know what x is. Then we're going to multiply the number on the outside of the brackets by the second number inside the brackets. Very important not to miss this out. So x multiplied by 4 would be 4x. And that's a negative 4, so it'll be a negative 4x. So the main difference here is with the easy questions, we ended up multiplying a number by a number and using our times tables and having a large number written at the end in pink. Now with these questions, we're multiplying a letter by a letter, so we're getting a squared number at the front. So that number we wrote in green. So let's try this now for question two. So we're going to multiply the x by both numbers inside the bracket, multiply it by the x and multiply it by the negative 8. So x times x is x squared, and x multiplied by negative 8 would be negative 8x. Let's try that again for question 3. Multiply the number on the outside of the brackets by both numbers on the inside of the brackets by the first number and by the second number. Now you'll notice I'm using these arrows every single time I do this. It's just to help keep track of what I've used and um, if I've missed any out. And there's a harder version of this that's going to have four arrows and double bracket. So it's worth using these uh, arrows to, to start with, just to get practiced for the harder questions that need them more. So x times x would be x squared, and x multiplied by negative 6 would be negative 6x. Now, question five, uh, question four is a little change, but we're going to keep on doing the same thing, and we'll see what happens when we get to the change. So we're going to do x times x would be x squared, and then it's going to be x times 5y. So we have an extra letter inside the brackets. Now, we can just break this up into steps. So firstly, x times 5 would be 5x. There's no takeaway here, it's a positive, so we'll have a positive in the answer. And all you do with extra letters is you pop them on the end. So it'll be 5xy. We don't know what y is, we're multiplying it by 5x, um, but we can't actually do that because we don't know the value of y. So since we don't know it, we just pop it on the end, and then if we ever do find out what x and y are, then we can multiply all those numbers together to work it out. Now, to go in a bit more detail with that, so we have x multiplied by y equals x 
y is actually the same thing you're doing with the squared numbers as well. So when you have x multiplied by x, that's basically just the same as saying x, x. So all that's really happening here is we're getting rid of the multiplication sign because in algebra, you've got two letters next to each other. We assume they are being multiplied. But a little special case of the xx, you've got the same letter twice, then you just put a little symbol on to say how many other letters we have. We have two x's, so we call it x squared. So with that in mind, let's look at the final question. So x times x is x squared, and then x multiplied by negative 12y. So you this one step at a time. Look at your numbers first. We have a negative 12, and there are no other numbers to multiply that by. So we're just going to write down negative 12. Once we've dealt with the numbers, then let's look at the letters. We had an x in the question and a y in the answer. So altogether, x squared take away 12xy. And that means exactly the same thing as the expression with the brackets. Now, moving on to the herd questions, you'll notice these look much more difficult. We have letters outside the brackets, letters, and sometimes two sets of letters inside the brackets. So it looks like a bit of a mess, maybe a little bit intimidating perhaps, but it's exactly the same method. Be calm, patient, and work through it one step at a time. So our first question, we have 4x, and inside the bracket, we have 8x plus 4. So follow the method. We are going to do... 4x multiplied by 8x, and then we're going to do 4x multiplied by 4. So all we have to do here is split it up into two steps, work out the numbers, then work out the letters. So let's look at the green arrow. We're going to work out the numbers first, so that would be 4 times 8, and 4 times 8 would be 32. Now, no matter what the x is, because those x's are unknown numbers, they're not going to change to 32 until we know what the x's stand for. So we're safe writing the 32 down. Now, let's take a look at the letters. We have x times x, which would be x squared. And that's it. That's all you do. Split it up into two steps and write the two answers next to each other. Now let's do the pink arrow. Again, we'll do numbers first. 4 times 4 is 16 and then we do the letters we have x in the question and there's no letters in the answer so all we're doing is write down a list of letters that have been used in the question we had an x so we write down x and that's it that's our answer let's try that with question two firstly we're going to multiply the 3x by the first term in the brackets numbers first three times 3 is 9. Then we'll look at the letters. We have 1x in the question, 1x in the answer. So we're going to have two x's, or x squared rather, written down. Now let's do the second multiplication, 3x multiplied by the second number in the brackets. Numbers first, 3 times negative 2. Remember the negative. That's going to give us negative 6. Then look at the letters. And we only have an x in the question, so we'll write that x in the answer. Moving on to question three, again, we're going to repeat the method. So I'm going to write arrows down to show which ones I am multiplying together. The arrows in the same pattern every single time. Start with the numbers first. So look at the green arrow, 2 times 8 is 16. Then look at the letters, x and x would be x squared. Then look at the pink arrow, numbers first. 2 times 7 is 14. Then look at the letters. We have an x in the question and a y in the answer, x, y. So again, you can't go wrong. It splits the two parts. Do a numbers section and then do a letters section. Question 4. Again, the first step is to use arrows to show what I'm multiplying the green arrow first, numbers first, 3 times 2 is 6, letters second, x times x is x squared. Then look at the pink arrow, numbers first, 
3 times negative 6, well, 3 times 6 would be 18, so negative 18. Then look at the letters. We have an X and we have a Y. Final question. Again, set up the arrows first to remind yourself what you're multiplying. Deal with the numbers first. 2 times 2 is 4, and then x times x is x squared. Then we'll look at the pink arrow, numbers first. And we have a 2 in the question, and there aren't any numbers in the second part. So what do we do? Well, if there's no numbers, assume it's a 1. So 2 times 1 could be 1y. One 2 times 1 would be 2. Then look at the letters. We have an X and we have a Y. Let's write down X and Y. The last thing to mention is that all these practice questions have X's and Y's in them, but you could find any sort of letter and it would have the exact same rules. You have more than one letter, then use an index with a little number to represent how many you have, like we did with the X squared for two X's. And if you have more than one of completely different letters, then just write them all together in a row, like we did with the X, Y.